So one thing you want to make sure you do before you cut this and dispose of the skull is you want to get your measurements as best as you can. Now there's a couple main measurements that taxidermists use for a shoulder mount. The first one would be the nose to the front of the eye. That would be from here down to the tip of the nose. Now remember the nose sticks out about a quarter inch, half an inch in front there. You can take this measurement before you cape it. Uh, it might be a little bit more accurate to do it that way while you've still got the nose attached, but I'm going to go ahead and just hold this right in the front corner of the eye and run it out. And as you can see right there, it would be about a six and three quarter to seven inch nose. So we'll write that one down as a six and seven eighths inch nose. Next thing you're going to want to do is take the measurement at the base of the neck around here. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have any neck left on this one when it was brought to me. So I'm going to do my best to take the first measurement here. I'm just going to flip it upside down. And that neck would have been at the narrowest point, about right in here, behind the ears. And you want to go ahead and just gently get that in place and see where you would have been. This one would have been a 17 and 3 quarter inch neck for the first measurement. And that's right at the narrowest part, right behind the ears, right beneath the base of the skull. Okay, at this point you should have more of the neck typically coming down and you'd want to go ahead and take two more measurements. You'd want to start at that narrowest point and make a measurement about three inches down behind the ears and then go down one more measurement which would be about five inches down from the ears but starting at the narrowest point here. Record all of those measurements Keep it on a piece of paper with your cape, and that way you can bring that to your taxidermist. Last thing you're going to do is skull cap it, where you're going to cut it off. You're just going to have the rack held together with a little piece of the skull here. That way you can dispose of the skull. You're not carrying that around everywhere. Uh, this is a step that you don't really have to do. If you want to just transport it this way in a bag, you can. That's fine, but uh, some states actually require you to remove as much bone as possible before you move a deer from state to state so you want to check and make sure your state may require you to do this before you can bring it back. Bone saw will work. Sawzall works a heck of a lot better. Uh, just to show you in case you're out somewhere where you don't have electricity I'm going to show you how to do it with a bone saw. Okay the first cut you're going to make is right in between the antler burrs and the eyes and you want to err on the safe side so I'm going to go a little bit closer towards the back of the eye orbits here and you're just going to kind of cut back down in towards the neck. Alright so I brought that cut through. You want to go on beyond the antler burr here because you're going to cut through and you want this to connect here. There's actually a little ridge right here that you can free up with your knife, this muscle tissue. And when you cut through you'll give yourself a little ridge that you can balance this saw on when you start cutting. It makes this step a lot easier. I'll kind of put my arm in through and kind of brace everything that way and just gently get it started. and then work your way on through until you connect up with that cut there. All right, so once you cut through, you'll see that this will pop off. This is actually your skull cap here. Now what you want to do is just take the tip of your knife, go in here, and you can pop the rest of the brain out, and then just take your knife and clean up some of this extra meat off here so you're not leaving with a stinking mess. And that's how you save your skull cap. One other tip I'll give you is that you might want to, throughout the season, uh, you get some does or something like that, practice this on a doe or if you happen to get a small buck or you're helping somebody else. Anytime that you get a chance to practice caping one of these, it'll help for when you actually have to do it on one that you're actually going to mount. All right, well that's how you cape a deer. If you're out on a hunt and you can't get it to a taxidermist, that's the way to take care of it so you can get it safe and out of the elements right away. Hopefully this helps. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the lines below. As always, keep subscribing. We'll keep more videos coming for you. And don't forget to check us out on Twitter at Total Outdoor PRG or Facebook at Total Outdoor Programming. What's your favorite animal to uh, mount? 
you're not going to get me to say that I have a favorite a favorite animal to mount. So I've known you too long and I know what you'd say.